So welcome everyone today to the epigenetic seminar. It's really wonderful to see so many of you here because that shows how interested you are by the work that we do at the Garvin Institute. So my name uh, is Susan Clark and I'm the head of the genomics and epigenetics division here at the Garvin Institute. Now this division was established three years ago and it's the first of its kind in Australia. You might ask why we added this new division to the Garvin's research portfolio. And the answer really is quite simple. Because at the Garvin, we're using DNA sequencing every day to help us study our diseases such as cancer, immunological disorders, Parkinson's disease, diabetes, osteoporosis. But we need to know more than just the DNA sequence. We need to know how that DNA code is read, how it's different in each cell type, and how the change of reading of that code can impact on diseases. So this field, the field of DNA biology, is called epigenetics. And the understanding of epigenetics, we believe, is the next frontier for us to be able to master that if we look at new ways of combating the many diseases that we study. So today, my wonderful research group and I are going to explore what we mean by the word epigenetics, why we think it's so important, and how epigenetics works to read the DNA blueprint that makes us human. So what I'm going to do in the first uh, 15 minutes or so, is to give you an overview of this word so it's not foreign to you <coughs> and so that then you can enjoy the rest of the speakers where they're going to tell you about what excites them about their research and why we think it really is the next frontier. So to start with, epigenetics. Epi literally is the prefix meaning above genetics. So to start off today, I thought I'd start off quite simply to explain to you what we mean by genetics and therefore explain to you what we mean by epigenetics. So I'm going to give you a simple analogy. So you all know that genetics is our DNA and it's the blueprint of life. So if you were to put the sequence of the DNA, that blueprint, as letters in the book, then that is what we term genetics. It's reading our book of life. This is the blueprint. So what then is epigenetics? Epi means above. And what we mean by that, it's translating the book of life, translating the code so that we can actually understand what we're reading. Otherwise, it's just a series of letters. To give you an example, if you just saw those letters there, most of you wouldn't know without concentrating what that might mean. But if you put punctuation in those letters, it could mean a woman, without her man is nothing. But if you change the grammar, change the punctuation, suddenly it's different. A woman, without her, man is nothing. <laughs> so clearly, just a few punctuations, just information above those letters totally changes how you interpret the code, how you interpret the instructions. And this is what epigenetics is. It's, it's those simple changes that allows you to change how you interpret the code without changing the letters. So for example, again, it's not just punctuation. It's also in this book of life, you have all of these letters, but you can use um, not just commas and full stops. You can use words, you can use paragraphs, you can use book chapters. There's so many ways of being able to change how you interpret a story. Now if we go back to genetics, DNA. DNA, you know, double helix, it was discovered the structure back in 1953, so more than 60 years ago. And then it took till 2001 to be able to understand DNA, to be able to know that it consisted of this four letter code, GATC, and the fact that there were three billion letters, three billion combination of GATC in every one cell. 
And it's that code, that's the blueprint, that provides the instructions to make us human. But one of the biggest challenges that we have is that we know that each cell in our body has the same three billion letters, and yet each cell in our body is different. So this is a very big challenge of biology. How does each cell know what it's supposed to be when it's got the same code? It's got the same three billion letters, unless it, and yet a fat cell obviously turns out to be very different to a brain cell and to a blood cell or a heart cell. So this is, this is the challenge that uh, we have been looking at. And this is where we understand that only parts of those three billion letters are read in each different cell type. And this is where epigenetics comes in. So a blood cell will only have part of the code read. It will have paragraphs blocked out. It will have words blocked out. In a blood cell, that will be different paragraphs or different chapters that are blocked out in a brain cell. So this is very important. So to allow for development, uh, to allow for our cells to be different means that each cell has a different chapter in this book of life. So, as I said, we look at epigenetics as genetic punctuation. But how does this physically work? Now, this is one of the first beautiful uh, images of a chromosome. So, chromosomes are where, where DNA are housed inside our nucleus. And so this chromosome has been pulled apart and looked at under electron microscopy. And this picture was taken back in 1961. And some of you might have heard of this expression that our genes are like beads on a string. So you can see in this lovely photograph, this is DNA wrapped around beads, looking like beads on a string. This is, if you can see it there, pearls um, decorating our DNA. And why is this important? It's because it's these beads, these pearls, that provide the genetic punctuation, the epigenetic layers. And so I've just put a cartoon here. This is a chromosome. We've pulled the chromosome apart to look like this picture. And you can see here DNA wrapped around these beads. Now why is this important? It's important because, again, if we've got three billion letters, if we were to pull the chromosomes apart, this would be two metres of DNA. Can you imagine that? Two metres of DNA that has to fit inside every cell, cell nucleus. And that is very tiny, two microns. So this is a major challenge for the cell. And it needs these architectural <coughs> instructions, this genetic punctuation, to be able to organise the DNA in a cell such that the genes can be read. So this is what we call the epigenome, these instructions. And there's two instructions, two epigenetic features that are critical for us to be able to study and understand. And the first one that you'll hear a lot about today is DNA methylation. So this is where the DNA code can be methylated. And I've just shown you here uh, the chemical modification. So many of you who might be chemists can see that this is a methyl group and that methyl group is added to the DNA and in particular it's added to the cytosine or the C base in mammals. It's a normal phenomenon and that methylation is, is really important because when it's methylated as shown here by these little lollipops, the methylation uh, results in the DNA becoming compacted. So it's like shutting off some of those paragraphs uh, in the book. And this is important that we need to be able to understand the methylation profile when we sequence the DNA, not just the A, T, C, G, but also whether the C is methylated, as it provides that next level of instruction. The second epigenetic modification that we study that, again, is really important for parsing the genome, providing the punctuation, is what is called histone modifications. So these beads, these beautiful beads that DNA is wrapped around, are comprised of four proteins. These are critical proteins called histones, H3, H4, 2A and 2B. You don't need to know their names, but it's important that they're different because each one has a tail. This is a real electron uh, image of a histone. Each one has a tail that can also be chemically modified. And the chemical modification is very important because 
if it's, for example, methylated like DNA, it also forms this closed chromatin structure. But if it is modified in a different way, it can result in the DNA being pulled apart and being opened. So these are paragraphs that can be read, whereas when it's closed, the paragraphs that are silenced. Now, why is this important for in, to allow for uh, a, a cell to become the cell that it's supposed to be? And that's because the epigenome controls which genes are turned on and which genes are turned off. Now, you might have heard of genes. <coughs> so DNA basically encodes genes. And genes are the important sort of workhorse, the important blueprint uh, that define who we are. So for a gene to be on, to be switched on, to be active, this gene has to be, no, I shouldn't have done that, should I? <laughs> this gene has to be in a region that is open, a region that doesn't have DNA methylation, a region that has these active histone marks to keep it open. And when a gene is on, it makes RNA, and that RNA makes protein. And it's the protein that we all require to be healthy. It's our building block of life. Whereas if, um, if the DNA is methylated and have, has these uh, repressive um, histone marks, then the genes in this location are switched off, and that means those genes can't be made. And this is important because genes have to be switched off. For example, muscle genes can't be switched on in a fat cell and heart genes can't be switched on in a liver cell. So it's really important that we have this on-off switch that is controlled by our epigenetics, our epigenome means across the whole of the DNA sequence. So how does our epigenome develop? Well, it changes from early fertilization and it keeps changing as we develop and it also changes in disease. So we're born with our mother and father's epigenome. That has to be wiped clean. And so very early on in development, each child gains their new epigenome. <coughs> this is uh, making their own book, their own chapter to be interpreted, which is why each one of us looks very different. The epigenome changes during development, and as we're born, we have this perfectly new epigenome that defines um, who we are and how the genes are expressed in each one of us. But unlike our DNA sequence, our epigenome keeps changing, because when the cells divide, not just the DNA sequence has to be copied, the DNA methylation, the histone modifications also have to be copied. And mistakes are made, because it's not a perfect system. And as we get older, more mistakes are made, and hence the aging process happens. We get gray hair, we get bald, we start losing our hearing. It's all a natural part of, of aging, but now we're beginning to understand what are the reasons. And the, it's the epigenetics, it's how our DNA is interpreted as we get age, as we get older, and mistakes are made. So this reprogramming happens uh, throughout our aging process. And interestingly, the environment can impact on this. So we uh, have more research needs to be done, but the possibility of how diet, stress, smoking, all can impact on these epigenetic changes, these chemical modifications, so that when every cell divides, mistakes can be made. And that can be impacted, for example, by smoking. We know changes uh, methylation of particular genes. But this impacts also on disease. So in disease, the epigenome of different cells has become very different. And this is what we study at the Garvin. We're studying how epigenetic changes in cancer, diabetes, immunological disorders, neurological disorders, disorders. These are the diseases we study at the Garvin, and we think it's so important to be able to add the information that we know from the genetic sequence and now the extra layer of how that genetic sequence is interpreted. So this is the research that uh, our division works on to really understand disease control. We have three pillars as our main research aims, and this is what we're going to be talking about today. 
We work on the mechanism. There's so much to understand about this epigenetic phenomenon. We're only really at the very beginning of it. And we need to understand that because this will give us new avenues for hopefully preventing, for trying to stop, not necessarily stop the ageing process, but to try and understand the impact of it, to try and prevent some of the diseases. Secondly, we know that these epigenetic changes provides new marks for disease detection, provides new tests, and you'll hear about that. And lastly, we're working on new therapies, how we can use this epigenetic information to now treat diseases uh, with different drugs that actually target the epigenome, target how it's interpreted. So hopefully that's giving you a little bit of background, the terminology, the words that you need to understand so that you can share in the excitement of the next talks. We're excited by this work and it's because it's a major new puzzle, as I said, the next frontier. The epigenome, it's a three billion piece puzzle, so if you love jigsaw puzzles, if you've ever done a three billion one, uh, it's, it's going to take a long time. And it's because each cell has a very different solution. So it's like you only get part of the pieces for each cell. So I'm looking forward to this morning. I hope you're looking forward to this morning. And at the end of it, we'll be able to tell your friends at the barbecue or at the coffee shop, um, wherever you are, what is epigenetics and why you're so excited about it. So thank you. I now...